even the new crying face filter on Snapchat, which was inspired, not inspired by Amber Heard, could prevent Snapchat stock from falling 40% today, following their incredibly weak earnings update. And you see stocks falling in sympathy like Facebook's Meta, M-E-T-A is the ticker, dropping 8%, you know, 7%, 8% today, losing tens of billions of dollars in market value. Similarly, Alphabet, another advertising-driven business model, down around 6%. So all in a complete bloodbath where the advertising losses, you know, in terms of market cap is over, well over $100 billion. And so this makes folks wonder, is this just a Snapchat problem or is this actually an industry or a macro concern that actually will impact Meta and Alphabet? Or is this you know wrong for them to fall in sympathy? And so, well, let's look at Snap for a second. So you see that their global advertising, you know, their daily active users is growing. And this is around the world. People still like to use Snap, up around 18% year over year, tens of millions of people, more people using it. Now, if you look at how much advertising revenue they're able to generate for these people, that actually declined by 4% on a global basis. Now, North America did see continued growth, but still rest of the world down 11%, partly because the US dollar was so strong, but this is reflecting tougher macro conditions. And that is what management called out, saying macroeconomic headwinds, platform policy changes. We've talked about that before with Apple iOS changes, increased competition. Mark Zuckerberg has talked about TikTok. These things have all limited the growth of campaign budgets. So these are budgets where businesses say, hey, we want you to know about our business. That's what a campaign budget is. In some cases, advertisers have lowered their bids per action to reflect their current willingness to pay, i.e. their willingness to pay is dropping like a rock. Next up, businesses are experiencing input cost pressure due to inflation. We have observed reduced marketing spending and lower bids per action. They also talk about how some businesses are actually still growing, but because of the rising cost of capital, they're also effectively reducing their bid. So this is what we've been talking about for some time. It's just you're finally seeing it with these results. You know, if you see inflation, that does in fact affect consumer behavior, where consumers all of a sudden say, well, wait a second, I don't have money for discretionary goods. So they say, hey, I got to buy my uh, my obligatory things. I got to buy my food. I got to buy my gas. I got to buy shelter. I don't have money for the discretionary budgets. So those companies that have discretionary goods, they're pulling back on their ad budgets because they're saying it just isn't working. And so those campaigns to, oh, I'm going to let you know about this really cool nifty discretionary thing, that budget disappearing overnight because people are like, I don't have the money to buy it even if I wanted it. The second key aspect, and this is why there's always this delay with macro, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. You're seeing that now with these cash burning companies saying, hey, our cost of capital is rapidly moving up. What are we going to do? Because we can't issue stock, markets closed effectively, and cost of debt is getting higher. So you know what? Are we really, you know, if we're if we're a cash burning, you know, hyper growth business, do we really want to spend money on an advertising campaign? You know, they're looking at their, their cost pressure. So those are two key aspects that are crushing the marketing industry, the advertising industry that you're just starting to see. And I, I called this out, you know, earlier this week in an, in an Alphabet video saying, hey, I expect given these very factors that you see Snapchat discussing now, I'm saying this could cause companies like Alphabet, Metastock, even though they seem like they're at a reasonable valuations, even though they seem like they're potentially cheap, that in this type of period, you could see valuations drop much much lower. And that's why it's so important to study history. You look at what happened to advertising stocks in the 1970s, some of them. Now, they're, they're different businesses, you know, because Google's a very different business than, let's say, Publicis or one of the major, you know, advertising, you know, branding companies or advertising agencies. But those agencies, those advertising companies traded at single digits PE multiples in the 1970s. It was such a brutal economy. And so that's the challenge of like, I'm, I don't think you're going to get that with Google. But I do think you could get like a like, holy smokes. And I, I own a little bit of Google. I own a little bit of Google. I own a little bit of Meta. But I'm cognizant of the head, you know, the headwinds you're facing. And I'm very cognizant of like, hey, is this being priced into the valuation for a lot of these businesses? And that is a very, very tough picture. Looking at Snap, effectively 
break even operations over the last few quarters on a free cash flow perspective. In the most recent quarter, they cash burned around 150 million, but that's only because they have such huge stock based compensation. And you can see every quarter you're talking about significant dilution, you know, every year diluting shareholders. And this is going to turn into a real problem for a lot of businesses, including Snap, because employees are going to be like, wait a second. You were previously paying me, let's say, 50 grand in salary and 50 grand in stock-based comp. Well, this, this, the share price is now 80% lower. I still want my 50 grand in stock-based comp. That's going to mean a lot more shares. Or Snapchat says, hey, we're going to start treating this like a real expense, and maybe Wall Street will start treating us like a real company. And... This isn't just stock that we can just hand out. It's a real expense. We're actually, instead of that 100 grand, you know, where you're going to get paid 50 50, why don't we do 100 in cash? Because that's actually, you know, it's a real expense versus continually diluting shareholders at a lower and lower price. That is going to be a huge problem that a lot of businesses are going to face, sort of this death spiral in the quarters ahead. Now, how is Snap and other advertising businesses going to react? The first is moving from, let's say, branded advertising, where you're just sort of doing a campaign to let people know you're out there, to direct marketing. Because this is sort of saying, hey, we want to move up the return on investment sort of spectrum. Because if, you, if you're just doing a branded campaign, it's hard to say, hey, did this advertising dollar actually generate any revenue? This is the environment we're in now, folks. This is where everyone's sort of scra scrapping for dollars, like saying, hey, how do, I, how do I make sure I still have a job by generating revenue? And saying that branded campaign that's like nebulous revenue generating, you're getting cut. But the marketing campaigns that might be tied to direct purchases, that's a higher return on investment. So that's where you're going to see interest and focus for the folks like Snapchat. Now, if you're Meta and Google, you are in a bit of a stronger position because so much of their ad revenue is driven by effectively this direct marketing where people are sort of saying, hey, I, I do want this sort of direct response. I click on this link and I do make that purchase. So there is they, they are somewhat, not completely, but somewhat insulated because because they have that sort of business model that is you know not as heavily dependent on campaign marketing that you see with folks like Snap and Twitter. Now, another key aspect that you're going to see from businesses like Snap and many others is this talk about, hey, we need to get to break even, we need to get it profitable. Yeah, you desperately need to do that. That's what needs to happen with all businesses. You're going to also see nonsense, complete nonsense like this from Snap talking about, hey, we're going to do this $500 million buyback. You just burned $150 million in the most recent quarter. What are you, what are you talking about this $500 million buyback? Well, once again, like if you keep doing this nonsense, of course, Wall Street's not going to treat you like a real company. Like, of course, you're just going to drop like a rock. And that's what you're seeing here. You know, 500, announcing a $500 million buyback when you're burning $150 million in the quarter, you need to get to serious free cash flow before you can start doing real buybacks. The reason why they're doing the buyback, oh, we're trying to offset dilution we're using. It's just nonsense, in my opinion. Like, do the buyback when you have real cash flow to buy back stock or the stock's like crazy dirt cheap. I'm not quite sure it's there yet. I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd. Personally, I like businesses that are closer to free cash flow. Now, when, at what point, will you start seeing, you know, the fish start biting? When will you start seeing the investors start picking up stock? And I think looking at this, um, you know, first, if you're looking to take charge of your investment journey, consider unrivaledinvesting.com. So I think what you're going to need to see with a lot of businesses is lower valuation. You've seen the initial reset from higher interest rates. Now we are just starting to see the impact of uh, impact on earnings. You know, when I said the, the higher impact on, on interest rates, the higher impact, you know, the impact from interest rates, that's an impact on valuation. You have valuation, then you have that earnings impact. We are just starting the earnings impact that's going to happen because of input costs going higher, because of consumer budgets changing. That's what's starting to play out. So for businesses like Snap, people are going to say, hey, I want either a crazy dirt cheap valuation or B, you're going to start seeing a liquidation cycle with some businesses. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen with Snapchat because Snapchat, 
you know, still has like a $16 billion market cap or something like that. You know, it still has billions of dollars market cap versus, you know, their balance sheet of $2 billion, you know, $2, $3 billion in cash. But that is the game that a lot of companies are going to start facing where you're only going to get the fish to start bite, biting when they have like, when they have significant cushion. When they have significant, what's that, what's that word over my shoulder? Margin of safety. When they're saying, hey, what's, what's sort of the backstop here? And in, in this environment where folks are saying, hey, I'm, I'm worried that the economy is getting worse, ad budgets are going to get tightened up, I don't know if there's actually a backstop to this business that's not generating real free cash flow. So you're going to have a shift with investor mindset where this value investor starts showing up and saying, hey, what's the book value? What's the liquidation value of these businesses? That's a completely different mindset, and that results in this sort of valuation gap, this, this rapid air bubble with a lot of stocks where folks go, wait a second, we're shifting in mindset from this growth mentality and assigning a multiple to growth to, hey, what's my backstop? What's my margin of safety? That is a very different investment environment to be aware of. You know, I, I talk, talk about the stocks that I find to be compelling, you know, what I'm personally buying and selling at unrivaledinvesting.com. So check that out if you're interested. And if you enjoyed this video talking about Snap, the 40% decline, what it means for the industry, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you so much for watching Unrivaled Investing.